Here's my incendiary fact. In 1860, which is the year before the Civil War, no Republican owned a slave. Now notice I'm not saying that no Republican leader owned a slave. I'm saying that no Republican in the United States owned a slave. And if that's true, if that's true, it means that all the slaves in the country, there were four million at the time, this was the zenith of American slavery, four million slaves were all owned by Democrats. Now, the, this is the kind of statement that kind of reminds me, if you will, of an atheist who was reading through the Bible. He read it from the beginning to the end, and at the end he made a small note in the margin. He wrote, important if true. <laughs> important if true. That's, that's applicable to my statement, important if true. But the beauty of my statement is it's, in a scientific sense, refutable. All you have to do is give me the name of one solitary Republican who owned a slave, and I would have to take it back. And yet to this day, two and a half years after I made this assertion for the first time, and despite innumerable and tireless effort, media matters, you can only imagine all these people doing their very best to ferret out a single counterexample, have not been able to do it. About six months ago, a fellow at the University of Michigan wrote me and he goes, Dinesh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Ulysses S. Grant inherited a slave, a single slave, but nevertheless a slave, on his wife's side. And I said, man, that is what I called an almost touche. You almost had me, but I got to point out to you that at the time this happened, Ulysses S. Grant was a Democrat. <laughs> he became a Republican later. Now, why is all this important? It's important because fake news sits on top of fake history. Fake narratives about America, attempts to con us and intimidate us and put us up against the wall. Part of our liberation is not just the ability to read between the lines, to figure out when you're being conned, but also to be able to deconstruct these fake narratives. And so as you arm yourself and equip yourself with knowledge, you become what I call a very dangerous American. You'll notice that the other side is a little bit, whenever you start speaking, it, they get extremely nervous and agitated because they know that everything they're going to say, you already know. But what you're going to say, they have no idea. And they have no comeback. So they're completely disarmed. It's actually... Um, it's actually a kind of an exciting notion because it, it, it makes you a powerful figure in the American debate. It, it arms you with, the, with truth and with knowledge, and you're the one who actually knows what you're talking about. Uh, Martin Luther King has a beautiful line which has always inspired me. It's actually not the line about the content of our character. He says, ultimately, every man must write with his own hand the charter of his Emancipation Proclamation. And I think what he means by this is that in a society of equal rights under the law, we have the right to be treated equally by the government. We have that right. But we don't have any more rights than this. And, the, and what we do with our freedom and what we make of our liberty and what we make of our lives, this ultimately is up to us.